So based on what we learned, how do these three come together and form an argument? Well, let's come up with an example. For example, if I want, if you wanted to convince your parents to give you a present, or let's say, yeah, let's say you want your parents to buy you, um, buy you some ice cream. Claim would be, buy me ice cream. Warrant, you need to give you a reason why. Because I will be happy. And your parents might go, well, why do I care? And the impact would be, I will live longer because I will have psychological benefits from happiness. And ice cream increases my well, longevity. And that impact will make your warrants and the claim more meaningful because your parents will be like, oh, this leads to that. So that's a basic, basic, basic claim warrant impact. Any, as I said, any simple or any complex arguments will have a claim warrant and impact. And there we go. Uh, for any for any argument, for contention, you, know, you should be able to tell a story that reaches a conclusion. Have a mental flow chart. Uh, what I'm talking about is saying cut. Have a mental mental flow chart. What I mean by that is say if this happens, then this will happen. This will happen, this will happen, this will happen. And complex arguments will have lots of these. We'll have lots of warrants and lots of impacts. And um, they will have warrants to impacts and then impacts to that warrant. And for example, um, on the, and these are called, these causal relationships are called um, links, by the way. And these could also, have lots of links. For example, ice cream is bad. Why? Because ice cream makes me happy. If I'm happy, I'll live longer life. And if people in the world live a longer life, then that means um, population increases because now people are living all the way to 100 years old. And after that, that um, if population increases, that means uh, conflicts may happen. Why? Because of resource shortage. Population increases, shortage of resources, conflicts, conflicts lead to war, uh, war leads to death. Ice cream is bad because it leads to death. So that's an argument that has lots of links. However, just because if there's a, uh, just because lots of links make your argument a complex and a unique argument, for example, ice cream leads to death people wouldn't even expect that. However, if you have a lot of links, that means your argument might be kind of weak because it's easy to cut this link off, cut this link off, or cut this link off and prove population doesn't lead to shortage, then no, your argument no longer proves ice cream leads to death because they just disproved this link. So if, you, if anything has a long chain, it could be unique, it could be complex. However, you are vulnerable to um, attacks because anybody can 
cut any link chain off to disprove your argument. So that's what you need to keep in mind for an argument. Now what we're going to do is put a outline for your very first case. Very first speech. So I talked about the intro. Intro should have a grabber, like a quote or a sad story. It doesn't have to have a grabber, but it's more effective with a grabber um, if you grab the attention. And after you grab the attention, you transition into why that's meaningful to this topic. And after you transition, you say, you state your position. And in a speech, you would say, I affirm, or I negate the resolution, or I affirm the res uh, res uh, resolution resolved that, and you state the resolution, whatever works. And then intro also has a, what's called a framework. We talked about that. And since framework is a new term for anybody who's not experienced, never say, this is my framework. Um, I advise you to say, uh, to clarify, we offer the following observations. First, we observe and you give your definition or analysis and you could do a second. However many you need, framework, whatever framework you use depends on what the topic is. So uh, there's not really a set rule to anything, but never say this is my framework because nobody will understand. Um, use this kind of phrasing to clarify or um, to observe the resolution or to interpret the resolution and say, I affirm, I negate at the very top. That's the intro. All right. Now, let's talk about the body, which are the contentions. So a body can have multiple contentions. And you just basically start off with by saying contention one and state your contention. And I told you about claims, warrants, and impacts since your judges might not know what that means. Just say what the claim and warrant impact is. Never say my claim is blah, 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 or my warrant is blah, blah, blah. Just say what your claim is. And that's what you're doing with by saying contention one, blah, 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 and have a topic sentence. That sums up your main stuff. And after that, you're gonna put in the warrants. Never say these are my warrants but you have uh, you should probably cite evidence according to uh, blah 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 according to this person from whatever institution or from the New York Times um, in 2012 cite your evidence uh, to explain why this is true um, also, next, we go to the impacts. I kind of lied to you. Uh, debaters do also say impacts in their speeches. You can. Uh, you could say, this leads to these um, two impacts. And then you just lead, um, list the impacts. And then you move on to the second contention. So basically, You state your claim, you state your warrants, 
evidence, facts, reasons why, and then you put your impacts, the effects of that stuff, and then you move on to your second claim. And that's basically the form of a contention. You basically tell the story, tell a story from beginning to the end and reach a conclusion. And then you tell another story. Um, that's how you should uh, approach your contentions. Uh, for example, um, if the topic was on Americans should increase consumption of ice cream. Resolve that Americans should increase consumption of ice cream. Um, your contention one could be contention one. Mental and physical health. And you expand that claim by saying ice cream consumption is healthy for people. Gave your topic sentence, finished your claim. Now you move on to the warrants. It's, um, you could say, according to Bob from National Institute of Health in 2012, uh, because of the unique mix of calcium, fat, and sugar in ice cream, it increases the um, psychological um, happiness in a person because of, um, I'm just making this up. And you explain your warrants like that um, with your evidence, and then you say this leads to two impacts. First. Uh, because of psychological benefits, we have productive and happy lives without stress. If we have happy lives, we live longer. My second impact is less war because if we have happy individuals, we will have a happy society and happy societies lead to less war. That would be my impact because I just explained why um, having healthy people is important and why what effects that will bring. And then contention two would be economical benefits. And then I would... Um, repeat that process all over again, give a topic sentence, give evidence, give impacts. And at the end of a speech, there would be a uh, conclusion. Conclusion is basically a call to action. Uh, let me write it in red here. Usually it could be fancier, but most debaters say because of these kind of arguments. We presented, you could list them, and then they end with please vote for whatever side you are on. Please vote for affirmative. That's how um, a basic case is. So first, intro. Uh, intro consists of your, um, your grabber. State what side you're on state your position, and then put in some framework definitions, analysis, and then you have the body, which you have contentions with that, with warrants, with claims, with, with impacts, and then thirdly, you say, please vote for me. That was a basic introduction to a case. Hope you guys after this could Start on your own case for your next debate round, and good luck.